everyone, my name is Gracie and today I am going to be making stays for COSI or Costube Symposium. Costube Symposium is the annual uh, YouTube costuming event and so there's going to be a lot of videos this weekend um, and I will put a link in the description box about the different videos so that you can make sure that you get to watch all of them that you want to. Um, if you remember last year's co-covid, I also made stays and people liked that video, but I got a lot of questions about fitting. So this first video, there's another one coming out tomorrow, is actually going to be about the process of fitting stays. I am making stays from costume close-up, um, which is a detailed analysis of some costumes in the Colonial Williamsburg collection. And the stays that I'm making are from roughly 1740 to 1760. I've made a version of these stays before, but they no longer fit. So I wanted a new version. And from what I can tell from pictures of these stays, I think that they are kind of a lower or middling class garment. They, um, they don't have straps, which frees up the arms for movement. For example, if you're doing laundry or the dishes or something like that. And they're also not made in a particularly fancy material. They're made out of wool as opposed to say silk. Um, and because of this, their silhouette is not as dramatic as some of the silhouettes that you see in the 1740s and 50s, which is good for me because I feel like that allows the silhouette to carry forward a little bit longer into the 1760s and early 1770s, which is primarily what I'll use these stays for. Um, I guess they're more drawings of women by Paul Sandby than fancy lady in silk dress, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I also want to say this is not like a detailed tutorial for how to fit stays. This is just a little bit about my process of fitting stays. But feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I will do my best to assist you or to direct you to someone else who can. Without further ado, let's get to the stays. Because costume close up doesn't have gridded patterns, only a ticked scale indicating inches along the perimeter of the page, I started by adding a grid to the pattern to get a better idea of the pattern piece's measurements. There are probably easier ways to do this using Photoshop or some other computer program, but a pencil and a ruler were easier for me and they gave me perfectly good results. My newly gridded pattern was on a one inch by one inch grid, so I purchased some one inch by one inch gridded paper onto which to transfer it. I traced the pattern pieces of the stays onto the gridded paper by eye until I had a full size rendering of the pattern. You may be wondering why I didn't alter the stays straight out of the book. That's because the original pattern, or I guess the original stays from which this pattern is based, are about my same waist measurement. And I figured that if they were too short or too long, or if they were too big in the bust, I could alter that. But I like starting from at least one measurement being the same as my measurements, because that makes, that gives kind of an anchor point. Obviously, if you are using a commercial pattern that includes fitting instructions, you should probably follow their instructions rather than the instructions of some rando on the internet. <laughs> but I find that if you have a pattern that fits you in the waist, you can usually take in or let out the bust as needed to make sure that it fits you everywhere else. You can also lengthen or shorten the stays by basically drawing a line uh, at the waistline and adding or subtracting a little bit of length. That is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but if you have questions about that, I will be happy to answer them in the comments. Once I had traced my pattern pieces, I cut them out of the gridded paper. My next step was to make a cardboard mock-up, and a sewn mock-up is all well and good, something with eyelets and boning, but <laughs> if you're like me, that's a little bit too much work. <laughs> um, and I also find that cardboard mock-ups can actually do everything that you would look for in a sewn mock-up, especially as a preliminary mock-up. If you've never sewn with a pattern, with a stays pattern before, they can give you a good idea of where the waist hits you, where the bust hits you, whether or not they will be too big or too small. If you are really concerned about fit, I would definitely recommend making a sewn mock-up. But for me, I am, I always just make a cardboard mock-up. I don't think I've ever sewn a mock-up of stays, and I've always had decent luck with fitting my stays. So obviously you should do what's best for you, but don't discount the idea of a cardboard mock-up. I use 
used pins to hold my paper pattern into place on the cardboard and then I traced around the pattern pieces with a pencil. Cutting cardboard is hard on both your hands and your scissors, so be prepared to rest your hands afterwards and don't use nice fabric scissors because you will ruin them. An X-Acto knife or something similar might make cutting the cardboard easier if you have hand pain. And if possible, I would try to orient the grain of the cardboard in the direction that the boning channels on your finished stays will go, but that wasn't an option for me and it still worked out okay. Each cardboard piece was cut without seam allowance and the edges were taped flush together, not unlike how the stays will be constructed in fabric. I recommend using duct tape or something similarly strong to make cardboard stays and be prepared to use a lot of it to wrangle the cardboard pieces together properly. On my cardboard stays, I used both horizontal and vertical strips of tape to ensure that they stayed together. I am going to demonstrate how I fit these cardboard mock-up stays. I have a mirror behind me that I hope will kind of help give multiple angles. I am pretty sure these stays are going to fit all right because the pattern was fairly close to my measurements and because I have made stays based on but not exactly from this pattern before and they actually fit okay. So for these I'm just going to kind of wrap them around myself and see where the neckline hits, where the waist hits, just make sure that everything is tip top. Being cardboard they're not the most comfortable or flexible but you can kind of see how they how they are supposed to fit um it's his own it would be nice if i could lace these up but uh, lacing through cardboard is kind of difficult so i'm just going to go with this um but i can see that they're about the right length um they have a good kind of splay over the hips with the tabs um and the back is actually fairly even. Um, I was pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to add a little bit of volume, or a little bit of extra to the center front, which is not a problem, I was expecting that. Partially because this is just a little bit too narrow, I would like them to be, I'd like the bunny ears <laughs> of them to be just slightly, a little bit further towards my armpits. Um, but I think in fabric, these will be quite nice. So I'm going to add a little bit of excess to the top of the stays and I want that basic, I want that fullness in the bust. So I'm doing it in the side front seam. So this is the center front seam. This is like the, the very front panel. And this is the side front seam connecting panel one to panel two, which would be here. I think the best way for me to do that is to just add about a half an inch here and then taper it off towards the bottom. So as you can see, I have my pattern weighted with thimbles and things, which is probably not the best, but whatever. Um, so that adds about a half an inch to that. Add my weight back. And I'm just gonna taper it here. There you go. Um, and then I'll just trace the rest of it. I'm not altering the top of the pattern at all. And um, then I'll cut this out and then I'll start cutting out my fabric. As a final fit check, I basted together the fabric pieces of my stays. In tomorrow's video, you'll see how I cut them out and how I basted them together. But because this is a fitting video, I wanted to include this here. This is after I had sewn the eyelets. That makes the fabric fitting much more precise because you know you have a precise lace up rather than trying to stitch yourself into a mock up. Although if you feel like it, you could do that too. Um, and this is good. This is just a good way to check your fit before you actually finish the stays to make sure that you're on the right track. So, as you can see, these stays fit pretty okay. The length is good. If anything, they're a little bit big, which partially is due to the splitting of the seams from my basting, but is also partially due to the fact that they are just slightly too big. Um, they'll shrink a little bit with the addition of boning and they will, I'll pres I might end up taking in a little bit of fabric from the side seams or between, I don't know, panel two and three. 
think that's the numbers. Um, what else? I assume you guys are watching this in the fitting video, which is coming out on a Thursday. Um, and so just ignore the fact that like most of the panels have already been stitched. If I was doing this as I should have done, rather than having a messed up timeline, I would have just done the back panel. So I had eyelets and then the rest of the panels would be blank. But this works too. I have something that I can fit. Um, I think with the addition of boning, these will be a pretty good shape. As I said, the length is good. Um, and they're not too small on the bust, which was the problem with the first iteration of these, the style of stays. Um, do I have anything else that I want to consider? Oh, if you're wondering what my shirt says, it says, we have a right to good jobs and a livable future, which seemed rather topical considering that I am filming this on August 14th, which is a couple days after the IPCC report came out, detailing just how screwed up we are with the climate crisis. Um, love that for us. Yeah, I assume I'll see you in some sort of outro and keep an eye out for tomorrow's video about actually making these stays so you can see how I stitched up these panels. I hope that video was helpful. I hope that showing my process for fitting stays was useful to you if you decide to fit stays. Um, and don't forget to keep an eye out for tomorrow's video if you are watching this the day it comes out on Thursday. Tomorrow's video will be about actually making the stays, which is super exciting. Um, yeah, and again, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos within Cozy. There's also lots of Instagram events going on. So just check the links that I'm putting in the description box for lots of fun content this weekend. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye.